Sam Smyers here. Today, I want to talk about how to use the drum rack in Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. The drum rack is useful if you want to take a bunch of drum samples and then put those into a drum kit. It's also useful if you want to play some of those drums. Say you have a MIDI controller or possibly a keyboard or some kind of drum pad controller that you want to actually play your drums in. Let's open up the browser here. Then I'm going to go to the drum rack, which is going to be found in the instruments. And I'll go to drum rack. And you have to create a MIDI track. Drag the drum rack onto that MIDI track. This drum rack looks like this. We have the pads here. There's 16 pads. If you look on the side here, we can choose different ranges of pads. And these just correspond to the different notes on your keyboard. As you're looking at this, you probably noticed some differences between Ableton Live 10, and this is actually Ableton Live 11. At the end of the video, I'll show you the difference between Ableton Live 10 and Ableton Live 11. It is a small difference. Most of the things that I will be going through will be applicable to Ableton Live 10 as well. Let's go ahead and put on some drum samples into our drum rack. I'm gonna go ahead and go into Splice, and of course, I'm gonna go to the Murda Beats pack. Murda Beats, Murda Beats, created a quarantine kit that is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and use this kick. I'll put this kick onto C1. Then let's go ahead and do a snare. Sounds pretty good. Let's put that snare on here. Then let's see, how about a 808? Sounds pretty good to me. Let's do this right here. Then I want a clap and possibly a hi-hat. Let's do this hi-hat here. Then let's find a clap. And then I think Boy Wanda has a good open hat I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and use this open hat. Let's check out my kit now. And I'm going to just play these notes on my keyboard. Okay. Now I have my drum rack set up. As we dragged in the samples, you can see now there's a M for mute. There's the play button, which will play it. Then we have the solo, which will just solo that sound. And then we have this simpler opened up. This is the kick. Let me select the kick. Now we can see the simpler turning on. And I can right click and change this to a sampler if I want to have more options to change my sample. Right now, I'm just gonna leave this on simpler. And I wanna show you something else that we could do. I could actually go into my instruments here and I could go into operator. I could go into bass and I could put in an instrument into my drum rack like that. Of course, when you just put in an instrument into your drum rack, it's just going to play one single pitch. I am going to actually take this off. The only instrument that I want to be included in my drum rack is the 808 for now, which is that. We have some options on the left-hand side here. If I click this button here, then it opens up the chain for each of our sounds in our pads. We have the play buttons. We have the volume buttons. Let's go ahead and play this kick here. I could turn down the volume. Now it's really quiet. Double click to reset. I could pan it to the left and right. Now it's to the right. Now it's to the left. And then I could turn off the sound altogether. Now if I play it, it doesn't play. Or I could, of course, solo it like that. Let's go ahead and create a drum loop. I'm going to insert a MIDI clip here, and then I'm going to create some drums. Let's go ahead and do this kick, and then we'll do a clap, and drag this throughout, kick, clap, like that. And of course, let's go ahead and put in our hat, like that. Just gonna do this really quick, try and get something basic down. And let's go ahead and put in our 808. We'll put the 808 on the kick hits. Now we have our drum loop that I made from the drum rack. Let's go back to the drum rack. 
And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video by now, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos just like this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down to this button here that says the I and O. And the I and O is going to be our input output. We see where it says receive here. Receive is going to be the note that is going to be triggering that sound. Here we see the kick and it says C1. Snare C sharp one, clap D1. What if I want a note to trigger two sounds? I could go to my snare here and my clap here and I could go to change this to C sharp one. Let's go to C sharp one. And now we have both the snare and the clap assigned to one note or one pad. Now if I play C sharp one, it's going to play both the snare and the clap. If I look at my pads now, it has changed this multi because now I'm triggering both the snare and the clap. Let's go ahead and make sure we change it in our drum rack though. Maybe take that snare down a bit. Next you have the play. The play is going to determine the note that you are playing. If I drag this up or down, it's going to change the pitch. Let me go ahead and play the 808. That's going to be on C, C3. If I drag this up, it's going to change the pitch. Or down even lower. Let's just go ahead and leave it on the C3. And then we have this thing called choke. Basically with choke, you have 16 different groups. And what you can do is you can assign two sounds or more to a group. And then whenever one of those sound plays and then another sound plays, that first sound will be cut off when that second sound plays. It'll basically be choked. What I could do is I could use this for hi-hat patterns. If I have an open hat and I want that to cut off whenever I play a closed hat, let's go ahead and go to my hat here in our open hat. Let's go ahead and assign the hat to the choke one group. Then let's go ahead and put an open hat into our pattern here. Now notice whenever this next closed hat came up here, the open hat turned off. I could play it on my keyboard. That's how the open hat sounds when it rings out. And then as soon as I hit the closed hat, it stops. Otherwise it would ring out like that. Let's go ahead and put this throughout our loop. Okay, like that. Let's not talk about adding effects to our sounds. We could add effects by adding a return. I can hit this R down here, and this will open up this area where we can add audio effects. Let's say I want to add some reverb. Let's go ahead and search for a reverb and go to our audio effects. Let's go to reverb here, drag it onto there. Now we have a reverb that I can put 100% wet, raise this up to high, and then go to this input processing, put on a low cut. What I can do now is I can take the clap and then I can open up this send menu here. I hit the S, opens up the send, and I can send the clap to the reverb. And now we have reverb on the clap. I could also take this reverb and let's say I have a return in our session. Let's say this is a reverb return. What I could do is let's go ahead and put our reverb here on this reverb return. If we're using return tracks in our session, I could do this a different way. Let's go ahead and delete this. I could create a return chain. This is going to be sent to our returns in our session. I'll go ahead and send this to the reverb. And now let's go ahead and play the clap. Instead of using the reverb in our drum rack, I am using the reverb as a return track in our session. What I could also do is I could put a audio effect in here, and then I could actually send a sound to the audio effect. 
let's go ahead and go to my hat here, and I'm going to send the audio to the frequency shifter. And that's going to send the hat sound through this frequency shifter, and then that's going to come out through the output. As you can hear, I'm changing the frequency of this frequency shifter, and you can hear that that hi-hat is changing pitch. Those are some of the ways that you can use this return section here. Let's go ahead and close this return section here. And then what I wanna show you now is this macro menu. I have another video that explains how to use macros. Let me just go through it really quickly. If you wanna watch that video, I'll put a link in the video description below for you to check that out. Let's say I want to assign the volume to one of these macros. Let's go to the kick, right click, I'll map this to macro one. And then let's say I want to map the 808 volume to macro one as well. And now I can adjust this macro and it is adjusting the volume of the 808 and the kick. That is our macro menu. Of course, if you want to open up some more settings, you can click on this map button here open up the browser, and then you can adjust your min and your max. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, there is one more thing I wanna show you that is new in Ableton Live 11, and that is going to be this thing called the macro variations. And what I can do is once I have my macro, I can set this to, let's say here, hit new, and that saves, takes a snapshot of my macro settings. I could then set it to zero, and then create a new variation. Now I have two variations. If I click on this first one, it takes it to that first setting, that first snapshot. Then I'll click on the second one and it takes it to the new snapshot. Let's go ahead and play our loop. That's just a way that you can recall some of your macro settings if you're using macros. Now I wanna show you how to actually change some of your sounds by putting inserts on them. Let's go ahead and look at our 808. I could drag on a compressor because I like to have my 808 pretty limited. Let's go ahead and put on a compressor on our 808. Then I'm gonna slam this to a limiter basically. Now I have the limiter on my 808 and you can just go through your sounds here and you can drag on effects after the sample. For an 808, since I have an 808 in my drum rack now, you might want to know how to sidechain your 808 with the kick, especially if your kick is in your drum rack and not just as a separate track. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's go back to our 808 here and let's go ahead and put on another compressor after our 808. This second compressor is going to be our sidechain. We'll open up the sidechain menu. Let's go to audio from, and you're going to select the drum rack. And then you're going to select this option here with the drop down. And you're actually going to be able to go to the drum rack and the kick in your drum rack. And so I'm going to go to post effects here. And now we're going to assign the kick from our drum rack to go into this compressor. Now we have that sidechain working because we feel that 808 being brought down whenever the kick hits. And that is helpful to make sure that that kick really shines through in your drum loop. Now, of course, once we have this whole drum rack set how we like it, then we should save it as a preset so we can load it up whenever we want to. Let's go ahead and hit this save button here like that. And now I can label this Sam's Dope hop drums like that. And now let's say we take that out and I wanna put some drums in, then I just drag this onto a MIDI track and now we have our drum rack. Like that. There you have it guys, that is how you use the drum rack in Ableton Live. I hope that was helpful. And if you did find that helpful, please go ahead and give this video a like 
and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.